Sawgrass SG-1000 sublimation printer right here with the bypass trace so I can do up to 13 by 19 paper. Bought this from Heat Press Nation. We're going to take it out of the box and put it together coming up. I'm Roger. Welcome to what I call the loft above the shop. This is where we do a lot of the uh, crafting projects. Uh, have the heat presses are up here. Uh, my Cricut's up here. We've got another die cutter over here. My uh, Epson 2720 printer is down here. This is the Sawgrass SG-1000. It is not going to take the place of my Epson. What I bought this for was to be able to do things larger than 8.5 by 14, which is the biggest I can do on this Epson 2720. I want to be able to do 11 by 17 and 13 by 19 for some bigger graphics. That's why I picked this up along with the bypass tray. I got the uh, standard ink pack, not the extended and not the starter. I got kind of the middle of the line. We'll see how this goes. I, I will not be using this quite as much as I will be using the Epson. But on the other hand, this will self-maintain itself. The Epson does not, so I have to constantly make sure I keep my nozzles clean and everything. This has a self-maintenance mode to it, so I don't have to worry about my heads getting clogged or any of that kind of stuff as long as I keep it plugged in. Uh, another big difference here is the price of the ink. The sawgrass ink is way more expensive than the hypo ink I use on my, I should say hippo ink, I use on my Epson. And most of my graphics are small that I do with, uh, for example, coasters and mouse pads and uh, koozies and, you know, toddler shirts and stuff like that. When I get into some of the bigger shirts, I want to be able to use a larger graphic, especially for those that wear the, uh, let's say, 3X, 4X. I could put a full 13 by 19 graphic on the front of that. I've got a, a big heat press now, a 16 by 20 signature series. It also came from Heat Press Nation. And no, I'm not sponsored by Heat Press Nation, and they did not give me this. They don't give these away. These are expensive. But I think it'll be a good investment. So get into uh, unboxing the printer itself, and then we'll get into putting the bypass tray on and getting the ink installed. Uh, try not to keep this, or I'm going to try to keep this video somewhat short and not really extended. I will go into detail on certain things. But I don't want this to become an hour-long video. If it becomes too long, I'll split it into more parts. So with that said, we get some stuff moved around so I can get this box open. We'll see what we got. Well, there is kind of a cheat sheet here right on this flap that gives you all the steps on how to unpack this thing and what to do. But uh, I think we can figure that out. It's nice to see that they did that. Right on top here, we have a manual that is taped and taped and taped. So we got the standard safety information in multiple languages here. I don't read French so we'll leave that one off. And this is all pretty much just safety and regulations and how to read the manuals. That's a good thing I guess to know. And like I say this one here is in French but I don't read that. So set this off to the side. Don't need that. Put this into a trash can. This side over here, we got a, a power cable and the USB cable and more tape. So we'll definitely be needing that. The styrofoam. I'd like to know why is it there's no place to recycle styrofoam. I don't know exactly how they do it, but even the recycle places won't take styrofoam, at least not around here. And from here, we can just take the printer out. And I need to get rid of a box. Okay, I got rid of the box, and this is in a plastic bag, which we will get it out of. And I have the front facing the camera here. Okay, if you've ever bought a printer before, you know it always has all this blue tape on it all over the place to uh, keep things from moving around while it's in transit. So we need to remove all this blue tape from both the outside and inside. And you'll need to look all over the printer 
before you do anything else to make sure you get all this blue tape off that includes the internals as I mentioned and fortunately it did leave little tabs on this tape so you can grab a hold of it pretty easy that's on the inside that's on the inside open this up yeah we got some over here we got a piece of foam needs to come out piece of tape right there on the inside I don't see anything else right there we have something over here this little cover comes off so you can turn this around so you can see it a little cover comes off so you can access the cable ports in there for both the Ethernet and USB we'll stick that back on for now a little window on the front there and I need to come around so I can see what I'm doing lots of tape then I can figure out how to get to that one and the paper tray we'll slide out another slide out here we'll slide okay we've got all those out of course the ink goes over here and we'll get into that here in a minute okay there are some different types of inks available there's the uh, the sizer ink I got the uh, sawgrass silver jet ink and the standard cartridge there's also an extended cartridge which is uh, almost a little more than twice the amount of ink in the standard then there's a starter cartridge which is only 20 milliliter but I highly suggest you not start with the starter because you won't have much ink left after it charges the machine well they even have a little picture here on how to uh, install the ink so I do not have this powered up or plugged in or anything yet and right here on the base it shows it goes black cyan magenta yellow well, it shows you exactly how to put them in and of course the boxes are marked as such There's black magenta cyan yellow it says right there create and profit so we set that up there I guess we'll start with the black and it comes in an anti-static pack that you will need to use scissors or a knife on because there's no tear tab on it I just happen to have a knife handy here and no I didn't throw that on the floor I got a trash can right there this just simply slides in and you'll hear it click a little bit so next will be the cyan and next the magenta I just noticed there's an expiration date on the front of the ink cartridge mine says March of 2024 I'm sure I'll have it used up before then and depending on how much we use this and uh, what projects get generated from it uh, I may get the extended cartridges the next time you got to make sure you get the slit in there there's a little track they need to slide into that is not crooked in there the labels crooked on the cartridge and last we have the yellow and just close the door the power cable that comes with the printer it's got a nice angled end on it right here and it fits into the side right over here and actually I'll turn it so you can see it fits into this receptacle right here and there's a place for the cord to run back and be out of your way uh, because I do this is not long enough to reach all the way over to where I have power I have a regular just straight one here that I use with one of my heat presses and I have it over here so that's the one I'm going to use in this case until I get this into its permanent home so we'll get this plugged in here like so okay hopefully everything will show up here I'm trying to zoom in so we'll hit the power button and it says please wait okay it tells you right there in case you can't read that little screen it says loading ink first time 
wait and do not touch the machine for seven minutes. So we're going to let this do its thing for the next seven minutes. Okay, this does have a status indicator as it progresses through its little thing. Uh, now it tells you not to touch it for five minutes. And one of them little uh, squares darkened up. So it is counting down for you. Okay, it finished its uh, initial priming and the little window come up and it's uh, ready to go. It shows your ink levels there. Of course, they're not full because we had to do the initial charge on this. Um, while this was doing its charge thing, I unpacked the bypass tray, so I'm going to get that put on next. Okay, this is just out of the box. It also comes wrapped in plastic. It's got uh, directions here in all kinds of different languages. And here again, you're going to have to remove a whole bunch of pieces of blue tape. You want to make sure you get them all. I'll get this plastic off of here and we'll get the tape off. Okay, we're taped right here to the top of the uh, bypass tray. They call this an anti-topple foot and we're going to put that on. It goes right down here in the corner. That way when you have the bypass tray and you have it loaded, there's no chance of the printer tipping. So we'll get the rest of this plastic off of here. And I did notice that on the bottom, we've got uh, another piece I need to put on, um, so don't miss that. Yeah, this piece that was taped to the bottom is a guide plate right here. I've got this upside down. You notice there's three little holes here, and then this is where these things will catch. There's tabs on here. These tabs just fit into this recesses where those little squares are punched out. And you may need to take your finger and guide that in a little bit. And that just snaps in. You're all set. So next I need to put the old anti-topple foot on before I put this onto the back. Okay, the old anti-topple foot here, there's a little recess there where this little clip goes. It just fits in there. Comes with this screw. They call it a, uh, a coin screw. I suppose you could use a coin. I'm going to use a screwdriver. Just slip that into that hole. Threads right in. And you don't want to over tighten that. You'll break something. Just snug it up and that's all you need. Okay, installing this is very simple. There are a couple of tabs right here. You see they move when you push these little buttons. A couple of guides right here. You just line these up. You push in until it clicks and it's there. That's all there is to it. And it can be easily removed just by pushing these buttons down. You could take this off if you're not using it. Uh, since my primary purpose is going to be to be using it, I'm going to have it I'll leave it on here. Put it back on, make sure it's clicked in there good. It's also a thing you can pull up here to hold your paper. Pop that back down. There's guides here you can squeeze to change your paper width. And there's even numbers there. I'll show that here later. Okay, so we got the all printer all set up. We got the bypass tray on. We got the ink charged, and we're ready to go, sorta. Now I have to install Creative Studio and the software. Uh, the way this works is you don't print directly from your. Let's say I'm using Inkscape, which I use a lot, and I want to print to this. I can't just print from Ins Inkscape right to that. It has to go through Creative Studio, which is is not a big thing. Uh, but I need to get that in, and I need to get the drivers downloaded, and for that I'll be going to the computer, so we'll be switching gears here a little bit. Okay, you want to go to sawgrassinc.com and create yourself an account and sign in, and I've already done that. Top up there is uh, support. Click on support. Now there's some getting started things that help you get started here. And settings guide there's a whole bunch of different kind of things there for depending on what you're doing we're headed for software here so printing the sawgrass manager print manager in windows because um, i would imagine it'll be a little bit different for a mac so we got to go to sawgrassinc.software print manager download for windows that downloaded and then we'll run the install. 
Yeah, I think English would probably be best for me. And we want to install everything there. I had mentioned earlier was this was called Creative Studio, but it's also it's actually called Print Manager. So we do want to install the device software. So now let's run it. The printer is not currently turned on. Okay, I couldn't find this there for a while. It's uh, what they call the EULA. you got to agree to their license thing there. And I'll need to put my account in there. Okay, let's select the printer model. SG-1000. Inc. Let's see. Sublajet UHD. Now install the required printer driver. Okay, I'm going to connect on USB. I do have the option up here I could do Ethernet. I never print graphics that are uh, really important on Wi-Fi. Uh, we have, there's too many things that can happen around here. You know, if the neighbor starts up a lawnmower and doesn't have a suppressed ignition on it, or certain types of microwave ovens will interrupt that Wi-Fi signal, you'll get dry po dropped packets, and it will ruin your project. I will probably enable the Wi-Fi on here later on. Uh, I do have Wi-Fi out here in the loft now. I finally broke down and did that. But for now, we're just going to use USB direct connection. We go next. Power on the printer. I can do that. Now you can't see that because I don't have a camera running right now. I'm recording off of my computer. But I'm doing the please wait thing and it's getting itself okay. We have the USB connected. New printer name, Sawgrass SG-1000. Finish. Printer is ready. Status is ready. And it'll tell you some of the different features you can use. And we'll get into that here later probably. Okay, I'm going to load some paper in here. I'm gonna, I've got a graphic I'm going to print. I'll show you how I'm going to do this in a minute. But I... Got loads of paper in here first. So open the drawer here. Of course, I'll need to set this. You see, I'm really cramped for space. There's a little button here you push to get this out to eight and a half by eleven. Set that right there. And I need to get me some paper. Okay, you need to put your paper in face down. Like so. A little adjustment right here in the front. Maybe you can't see that. Zoom down a little more here. You bring this up to where it just meets your paper. Oop, don't squish it up in there. You want that up forward. Where it just holds it. I only put a few sheets in there for now. Close that drawer. Pull the little guide out here. And I'll get ready to do some printing. Okay, I've created a little graphic here in uh, Inkscape, and I've got this set uh, a landscape here for this little SVG on here, so I want to print this now. I'll go to File and Print. This will pop up. I want to go to Sawgrass Print Manager, and not the, don't go right to the printer, go to the Print Manager. So we'll hit Print there, and then this pops up. So I, and I want this mirrored, of course. There's a little preview over here, and I want this mirrored. Uh, the paper I got in there is Texar print. And, of course, tray one down there. We want high quality. The substrate I'm going to be putting this on is polyester. Check some of these other tabs here for layout. This will just show you kind of what's on here. 
You can play with the color if you like. I'm going to leave it at photographic. You could go to vivid or there's quite a few different choices here. I guess there's only two choices, photographic and vivid. Yeah, let's go to vivid. We'll see what that does. Yeah, makes it more vivid. Let it print the file. We don't need to do that. So we're all set here. All I need to do is click print. So I will click print. And here's our graphic ready to put onto a shirt. So there's the entire setup for the SG-1000 Sawgrass printer with the bypass tray. Of course, I haven't used the bypass tray yet. Uh, the process is going to be just the same, except that when you go to print, you would want to select that to go to the bypass tray instead of tray one. Tray one is the default one in the front there. Um, I do have a little cover off right here yet because I don't have this in its permanent home where it's going to set. And I'm not real sure where that's going to be yet. i got to find some space up here. This thing's kind of a beast. The big heat press I got over there is a beast. So i got three heat presses up here. I actually own more than that, but granddaughter has one of them. So got a little heat press farm going on over there. Got the 3D printer farm behind me. One of the other bedrooms up here is uh, nothing but lasers. So... Yeah, we're, we're getting cramped up here, but I'll find a good home for it. And there'll be some more uh, projects to be featured up here shortly when I start making some bigger projects. So if you got anything out of this little setup thing, appreciate getting a thumbs up. Always helps the channel. Of course, always looking for subscribers. I'm Roger. The Loft. Above the shop. New Sawgrass SG-1000 sublimation printer. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.